Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I have some very exciting news about PlayStation 2 and also PlayStation 3 emulation on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So firstly, we're going to start with PlayStation 2 emulation. And the main piece of news here is that Telecrinkle, who is the main contributor to the PCSX2 emulator for the Mac operating system, has now released a version of PCSX2 that now supports the Metal renderer. So Metal is the graphics API that Apple uses in order to get games to perform well on Apple hardware. And Telecrinkle has finally ported PCSX2 to support the Metal Graphics API, which is going to provide much better performance than using the software renderer or the ancient OpenGL renderer that the M1 Max can use. So here I'm just going to show you how to go ahead and install this. So all we need to do is to go to the GitHub page of Telecrinkle. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. And then what we do is we go to the right hand side under releases and we're going to look at the releases section here. We actually have a release on the 26th of December and this is actually an update of this little Christmas present that came on the 25th of December which is where the new metal renderer was introduced. However this particular version had several bugs. One of these mostly affected M1 Apple Silicon Max which caused lots of rendering bugs to just appear on screen. However, However, this has now been addressed in the new December 26th release of PCSX2 for the Mac operating system. So just going to show you how to go ahead and install and set up this software. So if you're using an M1 Apple Silicon Mac, I'm actually using my M1 MacBook Air 2020 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 8 GPU cores. So in order to go to the next step, what we need to do is to click the 64-bit version of the software. I'm going to download this now. The next thing that we're going to need is the emulator file. So we need the PlayStation 2 BIOS. So what I recommend that we do is we use a resource like the GameTechWiki.com and this contains links to hosts of the PlayStation 2 BIOS. You can also find this in plenty of places on the internet. So what we're going to do is to scroll down to the PlayStation 2 section here and then we're going to click on these BIOS files and download them here. Just please be aware that if you're downloading BIOS files from the internet, just be very careful of what you download. The safest thing for you to do would be to actually get a genuine PlayStation 2 console and then extract the BIOS files yourself. However, we're going to rely on strangers on the internet providing files for us today. So here I'm going to click the download button here and this is going to download the BIOS files for us. So now we're going to open up Finder and we're going to go to Downloads folder and I've got my PlayStation 2 ROMs here and I now have these download files here. So I'm going to open up the PCSX2 folder first and now that's revealed the PCSX2 application. Now we're going to extract the BIOS files too. I'm going to double click on this. And now I have my PS2 BIOS files. So I'm going to double click on PCSX2 to open the application. And if we get this error message, what we can do is hold down the control button and then click on PCSX2 and then click open. And then this is going to give us this alternate menu. I'm going to press open again. And now I have the December 26th version of the nightly build. So at the time of recording, this is the latest version that supports the metal renderer with the bug fixes. However, in the future, this could be updated. So please keep an eye out for updated releases in the future. So in order to go to the next step, we need to go to the configure menu here. I'm going to go to general settings, press OK to allow access. And now what we're going to do is to select our BIOS. So I'm going to click the browse button here, and then I'm going to find my BIOS folder. So my BIOS folder is in my downloads folder. I extracted it earlier under PS2 underscore BIOS and then click open. So this contains the folder with all of the files that we need. And basically I'm going to use the last one on the list, USA V02.30. That's the latest version of the US BIOS. And then I'm going to press apply and OK. Next, what I'm going to do is to configure my controls. So I have my Xbox One wireless controller attached via Bluetooth. If you don't have a controller attached already, and then just use the pair button to pair it to your Mac. So next, now we're going to load up a game and open up the CD DVD ISO loader. And we're going to load up God of War 2. So I'm going to click browse. And then I'm going to go ahead and find my God of War 2 ISO. So PlayStation 2 games are very easy to find online. All you need to do is to Google the name of the game and the letters ISO, and you'll find plenty of places to download them online. So here we're going to select the game and press open. And in order to boot the game, we need to click on system and then boot ISO. So the main tip here with a game like God of War 2 is that we need to do some configuration in order to get this to work properly. So you can see here the renderer is set to Metal. So we have the options of OpenGL and software. However, Metal is the new graphics rendering API, which is going to work better than all the other options. And what I like to do is to switch the internal resolution to 1080p. This is a good MacBook resolution to use. So what I tend to do is to go to the hack section and for a game like God of War 2, you're going to get some errors if you don't enable hardware hacks. I'll just show you what it looks like. You can see the kind of character models are glowing and we've got these kind of vertical lines on the screen. However, if we go to PCSX2 and then we go to graphics settings, we can fix this by going to hacks, enabling hardware hacks. And normally what I do is click the align sprite button, then also have the half pixel offset set to normal and then round sprite set to half. And then that fixes that issue. 
So you can see here that we're running the game at around 60 frames per second. It's actually working really well, especially compared to how this game used to run in the past, especially using the OpenGL renderer. And um, what I'm gonna do is just to kind of maximize this and we can still see the frame rate at the top here, as well as the kind of speeds that the game is running at. I'm just gonna play the game a little bit just to see what it looks like. This is much better than when I tried it a few months ago with a much earlier build of PCSX2 and it works much better than before. So here I'm just going to demonstrate a different game now. I'm going to select a different ISO. We're going to open up Tekken 5. I'm going to press reset here. So you can see that up here we're still using the metal renderer. If I go to my graphics settings, I can see here I'm using the 1080p resolution and we're still using some of these hacks. These might not be necessary for Tekken 5, but I'm going to leave them in because they don't seem to be affecting anything. And you know, this Tekken is one of my favorite games and it's really good to see that it's actually working properly now, especially when we're using this new graphics API. So I can definitely confirm that Tekken 5 is working beautifully. Now I'm going to load up the game Shadow of the Colossus. Now Shadow of the Colossus is one of those titles that's very hard to emulate. It texts a lot of systems, especially when we're trying to run it at 1080p. Basically, we're going to boot the ISO here. So when I run this previously on the December 25th build, we were having some major graphical issues with the game, but this looks like it's been completely fixed. And uh, we're running this at the 1080p resolution here, and it's still lagging a little bit. We're only running at around 30, 40 FPS. What I'm gonna do is to turn the graphics settings down a little bit. I'm gonna go back to native resolution and press OK. Whilst it does look a lot blurrier, it actually works a lot better than it did before. So this is far superior to the earlier builds of PCSX2 that were working on the Mac some months ago. And this is particularly good, especially on the low end M1 chip. What I'm gonna do is to go down to graphic settings again. What I'm gonna do is just try the mid resolution, 720p resolution, press okay. So even at 720p resolution, we're not quite running at full speed. It does look much better than the original native resolution. Shadow of the Colossus is one of the more challenging games to emulate, but anyway, this is a huge improvement over what it was before. I'm definitely gonna be sticking with the native resolution here. There's definitely room for improvement. However, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Tyler Crinkle can come up with, especially since so much progress has been made in a relatively short amount of time. So this brings us on to PlayStation 3 emulation. So PS3 emulation has not been available on the Mac operating system, and that's because there's no macOS build of the popular PlayStation 3 emulator, RPCS3. However, this is all about to change very soon. On the GitHub project page for RPCS3, a new macOS pull request has now been spotted in the wild. This first comment by developer Nasties was commented 25 days ago in early December 2021. And here we can see that they are working on a native ARM build of RPCS3. They've also completed work on implementing Vulkan via Molten VK. So RPCS3 uses the Vulkan graphics API so that it can work on Windows operating system and other devices too. And Molten VK is the translation layer which allows Vulkan to run on the Metal graphics API, which is used by Apple devices. So this is crucial in allowing PlayStation 3 emulation to work on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. We can also see here various challenges in actually building the native ARM build of RPCS3, and it looks like lots of other developers have contributed to this pull request. We can see that work has been continued even just four days ago, and even older issues. So if I look at this macOS meta issue, this particular issue was written about in November 2018, and this is still being worked on even very recently, even as close as 17 days ago. So whilst the RPCS3 is not yet in a position to be released to the public, here we can confirm that various games are working. For example, Project Diva, Kingdom Hearts 2.5, Tekken Tag Tournament 2, etc. All these games are now working on RPCS3. It just remains a matter of time for the developers to complete work on it and for this to be in our hands. It'll be very interesting to see what the M1 Mac is going to be capable of, especially running under the Metal Graphics API running through Molten V. There's definitely a lot of potential in this little Mac chip, especially running these emulated games. So it's very clear that the M1 chip and the M1 Pro and M1 Max are very capable gaming chips, as long as the right software has been developed for them. And it's a very clear step in the right direction that PlayStation 2 emulation and PlayStation 3 emulation are being adapted to work on the Metal Graphics API, and will eventually hopefully be able to take full advantage of the power of the M1 chip and the ARM architecture. Once I have new developments on these, I'll definitely be sure to make a video on it then. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other videos about emulating retro games on the M1 Mac. If you'd like to check out this video, I run through all of the available emulators on the M1 Pro chip. I also have a full playlist of tutorials on how to get all of these emulators working on the Mac operating system and on the M1 chips. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. 
If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.